Unfortunately, this is very common for survivors of narcissistic abuse. You have to measure your words so carefully. You have to be so careful how you speak, what you say, how you look, that a lot of times you just stop trying to be social. You stop even trying to go out of your house or trying to be with anyone but the narcissist. And then there's the other side of it, where when you are out with the narcissist, you find yourself being attacked later for things you said, looks you gave, or anything like that. The question is, can you relate to this? Have you experienced this? We all experience anxiety from time to time. Everybody does, but especially when we're going through, even during a toxic relationship, but also after a toxic relationship. Soon after I left my toxic ex, I found myself in a weird place. I had just bought my new home, moved in with my son, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I actually thought I was having a heart attack. I was trying to figure out how to do all the things I had to do, how to pay all the bills, be a single mom, etc. And suddenly I really thought my heart was going to explode. I got nervous. I wondered if somebody had drugged me. I was shaking. My heart was pounding through my chest. I couldn't breathe in some instances. And it turned out after I went to the doctor that I learned it was a panic attack. If you've ever had a panic attack, you know it almost feels like you're dying. It's very difficult. What is a panic attack? Well, it's an intense sudden rush of fear or discomfort that kind of hits you like a ton of bricks. So real quick, what are the symptoms of a panic attack? You're gonna find yourself with a racing heart. You're gonna feel dizzy. You're gonna feel weak. Your hands and your fingers might tingle. You might just feel really scared and not know why. You might feel this impending sense of doom coming at you. You might even be afraid that you're going to pass away. You might find yourself feeling super sweaty all of a sudden or even getting chills or cold sweats. Your chest might hurt. You might have trouble breathing. You might feel like you're completely out of control. There are a number of other symptoms that can happen, but those are the most commonly reported symptoms of panic attacks. We're not going to go too much deeper into the science behind a panic attack because what we're here for is actionable tips to resolve the panic attack, to overcome the panic attack. So how do you deal with panic attacks? Well, there's a method called the AWARE method, and I'm gonna share that with you right now. When you're dealing with an anxiety attack or a panic attack, this can help you get through it. While most of us do experience anxiety attacks and panic attacks throughout our lifetimes, we might find ourselves in recovery feeling disabled by them. We might feel afraid to go out in public because we worry that we'll have a panic attack in public. Sometimes panic attacks result in fainting, and we certainly don't want to do that in public. Some people even find that sleeping can trigger an anxiety or panic attack for them, and then they find themselves afraid to go even spend the night at a friend's house or at a hotel or anything else. There are a lot of different ways you can treat panic attacks, and with the right approach, treatment can be highly effective. One self-help option is to use the AWARE strategy. The AWARE method can be highly effective and can prevent panic attacks from happening altogether if you're careful. So let's talk about it. AWARE is an acronym. A stands for acknowledge and accept. W stands for wait and watch. A stands for actions to make yourself comfortable. R stands for repeat. And E stands for end. So the key here is to essentially accept that the panic attack is happening. And instead of trying to fight it, you simply be aware of it. You acknowledge it and then you keep an eye on it. You watch it as you go about your business as usual. So what that comes down to is that in many cases the very best way that you can fight a panic attack is to act as if it is not happening. Be aware of it, watch it go through, don't try to stop it, but keep going. Am I telling you to ignore a panic attack? Well, not exactly. As happened to me, when you first notice a panic attack begin, a lot of people feel like they're having an actual heart attack or at least what they might imagine a heart attack to be like. Of course, this in itself is pretty distressing. And some people actually create anxiety about the idea of a panic attack because they dislike the experience of a panic attack so much. And who can blame them? It's terrible. So a lot of times what'll happen is that you'll be triggered by something and you'll start to think to yourself, oh my gosh, I'm having a panic attack. Ah. And then what do you think happens? You have a panic attack. So now you're worrying about the panic attack and whatever it was that triggered the panic attack. And then you sort of end up escalating the panic into anxiety and stress and everything else. And then sometimes you'll pass out or have other physical reactions to this situation. And that's exactly why it's important to not actively combat a panic attack or to not try to will yourself to not have a panic attack because you're not focusing on what you want there. What you really want is to be calm and peaceful. So instead of focusing on, oh no, I need to calm down and be more peaceful, you need to just take a deep breath and continue forward if you can. By taking the time to recognize exactly what you're dealing with and then continuing with the course of your day as usual, letting it happen but working through it, you're going to find yourself a lot more empowered and a lot more in power over your own mood and your own situation. Recognize it for what it is, be comfortable with it, allow it to run its course. 
and you're going to find that you're going to move forward more quickly, you're going to get more done in your day, you're going to feel better overall. And the best part is that once you become aware of the symptoms and you learn how to work through them, it will eventually stop happening almost completely. Very rarely have I had a panic attack in recent years because I did this method. Don't get me wrong, it's still important to try to keep yourself out of danger. And for example, if you're driving in the car and you think you're gonna have a panic attack, just pull over for a minute and calm down. Don't put yourself in physical danger. And just as always, go talk to your doctor if you're having panic attacks. Make sure that there's not something else wrong with you. Don't assume that you know. Just go check with your doctor to be safe. It's always important. And you should always check with your doctor before you do anything that I tell you or anything that anyone on the internet tells you. This, these are just self-help suggestions. Here are a few more helpful tips to help you learn how to deal with panic attacks and reduce your overall anxiety. Let's talk about equal breathing. This is a technique from yoga, which essentially requires that you breathe in and out through your nose. While you do this, you maintain your breath for an equal amount of time on the inward and outward breaths. So you might breathe out for four seconds and then breathe in for four seconds. This helps you to empty your lungs and fill them with fresh oxygen. The slow, deep breathing will allow you to trigger your rest and digest state, which is similar but slightly different to the fight or flight state, which is controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is a great way to stave off an anxiety response. Next, we're gonna cover breathing from the stomach. This is another breathing technique to try, and it's simply to breathe from the stomach. So if you try breathing right now, and note whether your stomach or chest moves first, you might well find that you breathe by leading with your chest. This will limit the amount of oxygen that you can take in with each breath, and that can increase stress. Instead, breathe by first allowing your abdomen to expand. Use those muscles and expand your abdominal cavity. This will allow your diaphragm to drop into that space, opening up your lungs. Then you can follow by expanding your chest and you will have more space in total to take in more oxygen. Let's talk about power positions. Power positions are those which have been shown by research to trigger the production of positive stress-fighting hormones. One of those is called the victory pose. If you simply stand with your arms above you in a V-shape, like you had just won a competition, this will increase your production of testosterone and other good feel-good hormones, helping you to feel more confident and more driven. Of course, it's always best to do this kind of somewhere private before the event that you're nervous about. So I found a new technique. It's similar to ones I've shared before, but different, and I kind of like it. I thought you'd like it too. Give it a try. So first, you're going to notice three things that you see around you. Then you're going to stop and listen, and you're going to listen for three sounds you hear around you. Just now I heard a cat meow, I heard that I need to change my smoke detector, and I hear some my air conditioner <laughs> blowing outside. I'm in the moment. Finally, you're going to move three parts of your body. So right now I'm going to move three things on my face. I'm moving my mouth right now, then I'm going to watch my nose. Can you do that? Also my eyes. Okay, so I've moved three body parts. Now you can also move your legs, your feet, your arms, whatever, but I think it's great. It's a great pattern interrupt and a great way to kind of get yourself back in the moment and then take the time to shift your mood. The next time you're feeling stressed out or you're feeling like you're not really in your head, you're not really here, or you're just about to lose your mind and you need to stop the pattern, try this. Well, this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you experienced panic attacks or anxiety attacks in the past? And what worked for you to get through the moment? Have you ever tried the AWARE method? Will you try it now? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below, and let's talk about it. If you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications to be notified of new videos as I post them, or you can send a text that says, notify me to 33222, all one word, notify me to 33222, if you would like to have me text you each time I post a new video. And if you want to know when I'm going live each time, you can text Angie Live, all one word, to the same number, 33222. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon.